So we are actually starting a book club next week, open to coaches and customers and potential customers around the book, Fear is My Homeboy, Homegirl. Why am I forgetting? Homegirl or Homeboy, Jen? Remember? Homegirl? Homegirl. They may be Homegirl. Homegirl. Um, Around that book. And what we're doing is we're inviting coaches and customers to join in the group. And then we're having like a separate coach thread so that we can like ha- discuss how it applies to the business. But I think that the number one fear that I get from people is they're afraid of someone saying no, right? And they're afraid of rejection. So that's why I'm so excited to talk about overcoming objections tonight with you. So um, Rosemary Smith is a seven star coach eight years in the business, a retired high school athletic trainer. I once worked in an athletic training office. It's a true story about me. And I like wrapped ankles, did all the things like just like in high school to learn about it. And then one day two guys bumped heads in the basketball court and there was blood everywhere. And then I was like, peace out. I'm not doing this anymore. Um, but yeah, I was like, I was cool with the orthopedic stuff of the blood, not so much. And she is a mama of one and she is pregnant, which I didn't know until this morning, I feel like. So congratulations. When you I do feel like I didn't know. I, I I mean it's super, super early, but I was like, oh okay. hopefully I will. I'll have enough energy and I'll make it through this. So if you see me like gasping for air or you know, the huh. How, when do you stuff. do sometime in March. I didn't like I didn't even um I guess because of COVID, everything is like they don't want to see you. Oh it's a long sweet. time. Yeah. So I'm like, I feel like I'm in limbo. <laughs> I'm like, this is so weird. So I didn't, you know, I don't even have like an ultrasound or anything. So sometime in March. Okay. Okay. Well, congratulations. Oh, thank you. So I will let you take it away. Like I said, we are recording this. So hopefully people will watch the recording. Yeah, all good. So first I'll just start off with my story because I always feel like that's super important and people can always kind of learn and get like a little, um, tidbit here and there um so yeah I started eight years ago it's like so crazy I feel like it went by super fast but like it's just it's been a crazy awesome amazing journey um so yes I was a high school athletic trainer I was doing that for about like two years and I was like this sucks (laughs) like I'm not doing this until I'm 60 and hopefully retire get a pension plan I love obviously helping people I love when um, people are bloody, like that's my, like that's so cool to me. I love that stuff. Um, I was like at the sidelines of a game and I'm like, can someone like hurt themselves? Can I like, I get busy here. Um, But there was a lot of um, politics in how I help people. And I'm like, I'm here to help people and really make a difference and, and not be bullied by football coaches and by administrators. Um, so I felt like number one, I wasn't really able to do my job and fulfill my potential as kind of like a healer and a helper. And it was funny because being in the health and fitness industry, I was super unhappy. And was that lead to overeating, feeling like crap? Um, I gained like 30 pounds. Um, and I'm like, I didn't even like recognize myself anymore. And I wouldn't just come up with excuses of like, oh, I'm getting older. And I mean, I was like 25 at the time, like making up all those excuses. I'm like, wait, I'm only 25. It's not like I'm like 50 or 60. Um, But, you know, we all make up those excuses to hold ourselves back, whether it's in our health and fitness or in our business. Um, So my brother did insanity. He got really great results. And even though I was running on the treadmill every day um, during my prep period, I was just kind of like running on the hamster wheel of life. but I knew I needed to do something differently if, I mean, I, I couldn't keep living my life the way I was. So I got insanity. I did it um, in my condo living room. I was on the second floor doing insanity and no one ever yelled at me. And still to this day, I'm like, how did that even happen? Um, but I lost like 30 pounds doing, you know, for the two full months of insanity. I didn't have a coach. I had no idea what a challenge pack was or no idea what a challenge group, like none of that. I was actually a free lead for my coach. After I did Insanity, I finally went on to teambeachbody.com and got my free coach. And I thought I was better than everyone. I was like, let me see what this silly like free coach has to say. But it took her 10 times, probably more than 10 times to message me before I actually responded. And I kind of wanted to just 
hear what she had to st- say because of my ego of like, oh, I knew better. Um, but it still took me like 10 times to respond back to her. So my lesson from that to you guys is always follow up with people, especially those free leads. I feel like, and and that's what I did with my businesses. I have a lot of free leads that are one star, two star diamond coaches in my organization. Um, and that's because I knew they were, they signed up for a free membership or they signed up for something for a reason. So, you know, once I get that in my coach online office that I have a new customer, I email, I text them the same day. If I don't hear from them the next week, um, I'll message them again. And I always ask them a question pertaining to whatever they got. So if they got, you know, 14 day free trial of bot, I'd be like, oh, do you need, you know, do you know a program um, you want to start with? Do you need any help? with finding um, a workout that you like, or if they got Shakeology, I'll say, oh, how did you like your first shake? Or I'll, you know, I'll send them recipes and I'll, you know, I, I did like a little Shakeology video from forever ago and I still use it. Um, I'll send them that. So I'm always trying to connect to them. I'll try searching them on Instagram, try searching them on Facebook. So any way that you can connect and keep following up with those people. Um, They might be gold. You just never know. So that was my intro into the business. And um, I was kind of all in from day one, even though I never posted on Facebook um, before becoming a coach. I had 300 friends, um, very shy, very to myself. Um, I knew I just needed more in my life. and And this was just the avenue that was going to get me there. And I knew that. 100%. So I feel like, no, you don't need the skills to be a a great coach. You just need to have the belief in yourself and not have, there's a book um, that I got on Audible, but I haven't read it yet. And I I don't know if it was like during summit or somebody or something, but I think it's called like your plan A is not your plan B or like something like that. But like, I didn't have a plan B, like beach body was my plan A. And for me, that was it. So it didn't matter how long it took me to be successful. I was still going to do it. So in three years, I was able to leave that um, athletic training job. I was a full-time beach body coach. Um, we built our house the same year. And I mean, Beachbody, you know, has changed my life in a million um, different ways. And we only have so long in this call. So I will leave it there. Um, So that's a little bit about me getting into overcoming objections. I think we all need to learn skills um, and have tools in our tool belt as coaches. And I think over um, overcoming objections is definitely one of them, because if you're reaching out to people, you're going to get objections. Um, so that's like the first thing is regardless, you're always going to get no's. It's just a part of the business. So whenever I have a new coach, I always tell them like expect to get no's because sometimes people come into this and they don't understand like, no, like everyone's not saying yes to me. I'm like, it's kind of the opposite in this. So, you know, in the beginning, it's like that batting average. Um, I always say like with Babe Ruth, he struck out actually more times that he hit home runs, but his batting average for his home runs was still really good. And that's kind of like how this business is too. We don't have to get A pluses every single time we go up to bat, right? Like we are going to get no's, but those no's are eventually going to turn up, um, turn into yeses. But we as coaches, consistently have to keep going up to bat and that's following up with people right um and those no's from a month ago or honestly even like I still have people eight years um that finally said yes like my cousin finally joined me this year um I'm like after eight years like hello but I didn't go away right like I was I always did workouts with her and and things like that so you just don't give up on people, but know, know that no is okay. Um, and we'll obviously talk about how you can overcome those no's. And um, our job is not to get a yes answer. It's just to see if what we have to offer people, it's like that can help them, right? So you probably have heard this before, like take that emotion out of that yes or no. It's 
can I help that person with what tools I have? We obviously can with Beach Body On Demand, you know, Shakeology, Body Live, the bike. I mean, all those are all the new things. I mean, there is so much potential and, you know, just amazing stuff that we have to offer people and you better have the belief that we can change lives. So, and I'll talk about that a little bit later on too. Um, so first things first is we have to prevent objections almost before they even happen. So here are a few things to even prevent them in the first place. First is always build trust and build value, you know, connecting with people, um, and not just sending like invites of, you know, from people watching your stories, it goes a long way. And I know like on my team, I have coaches that do both people that just invite people right off the bat, like if they watch their stories, or I have some coaches that will connect with them first about anything not beach body related. And then those people will come to them afterwards. So you have to really ask yourself, like, how are you going to build that trust and build that value? Is it going to be behind the scenes in your conversations first? Or for me personally, I'm the type of person I just invite people. Um, I, I, I don't like the whole fluffy thing in conversations. It works for some of my coaches, but I build value and trust in my posts by being vulnerable and by giving people lots and lots of value on nutrition. Like that's my jam. Um, and health things like that's what I love to teach people about. So that's the way that I give lots of value. During the conversation that I'm having with people, I'm obviously finding about finding out their why and why this is important to them, you know, beyond just the number on this scale, but making that emotional connection to them to build um, that vision for them of what this can do in the long term and how it's going to change, not just them in a before and after picture, but emotionally, how is that, how is that going to feel for them once they, you know, reach that goal that they wanted to. And back in the day, we used to call it forming, but asking them in your conversations, lots of questions so that you can get to know them. So if they've been watching you on social media, they know what you're about. It's now time to zip it and find out what they're about, what they need. People love to talk about themselves, right? So sometimes you just have to ask a question and let them do all the talking. They already know about your story. You don't need to tell them about how much you love Shakeology and how much you love Autumn Calabrese. Like, it's time for you to ask and be that person that's listening to them. Um, I personally love um, GoPro by Eric Worre. That book was the one thing that really changed my business and really taking control of that conversation and having a plan going through. So for me, like before I read that, I was kind of like all over the place. And then after I read it, I was like, this is really uncomfortable asking people all these little questions, but it really does give you a point to take one step to the next step to the next step, and then to them actually signing up, right? Like that's the end goal. So that really helped me go through the conversation with that end goal in mind. So if you haven't read that book, I highly, highly suggest it. Um, GoPro by Eric Worre. Um, this one, most people I know don't do now, but back in the day, like eight years ago, we used to do uh, like team calls and conference calls. Like you would have to like call in a number and it was like crazy. So everything was over the phone. So my next thing is get on the phone with people. I know we're all on Facebook and Instagram messengers and our DMs and I mean, if you can get on the phone with a person and have a real conversation with them, they're going to stick around a lot longer. Um, some of, you know, my people from eight years ago are still with me because I made that connection, got on the phone, even though I hated it, even though it was super awkward, you're going to even be able to close people a lot sooner on a phone rather than DMing 
and you know this day and that day and it's like been three weeks and they're still like where are they right if you can get people so i'll just say like hey can we get on the phone for five minutes and i can explain this all to you and really that helps so much so my um challenge for you guys this week is get one person on the phone whether it's to join your challenge group or to join your team just do it. it like my first call that i had with the person was actually a free customer it was super awkward i don't even think i mentioned beach body um but it was a learning lesson right i had to rip off that band-aid i got off that call i'm like man that really sucked i am not going to do that again next time i'm going to go in with a plan of action um so it's okay to fail a little bit right um when you're talking to people always speak as if they're already joining you. So, you know, don't be wishy-washy like, oh, I hope you will be like, no, when you join our challenge group, you're gonna see all the awesome ladies in there. You're gonna be able to access all of um, the meal plans and the file section. You're gonna, you know, be able to log all your workouts. Like we're gonna have so much fun together. Speak as if they're already joining you and be excited for them. Um, I, I think that too, hands down is, the best thing or um, the best tool you can have is being excited. People don't care what you know. They care about if you care about them, but your excitement and your energy, they don't care what you're selling. If they like your vibe, they're going to be attracted right to that. So even if you like have no idea what the challenge pack prices are or this or that, just be excited and love what you're doing and and they're gonna want to be right in that with you um so before i said you know you should love what we have to offer right you should believe that our products work you should believe that we have the best freaking tools out there i mean body is gonna be freaking amazing hopefully all you have nutrition plus now so you can have that little sneak peek access in August. Um, but you have to watch your mindset. Like, do you really believe in the workouts? Do you believe in the products? Do you believe in yourself? And if you don't believe in those things, then it doesn't matter what you say to people, they're going to see right through it. So you have to work on that belief, whether it's getting kick-ass results for yourself whether it is testing out some new products that you haven't tried before, um, whether it is like really doing personal development. And I don't mean reading the same book five times because you don't finish it. That's not doing personal development. That's wasting your time and thinking that you're doing work and you're really not. So go find a book you like. If you go into a book and you keep stopping and starting, stopping and starting, it's not the book for you. Chuck it and find something else, okay? Um, you have to get that mindset straight first before you get, you know, obviously have those conversations while you're working on your mindset, but that is like the number one thing that you need to be, feel so strongly about, um, especially with the, um, you know, the number one main objection we always get is price, right? Do you believe Shakeology is worth it? Do you believe what we have to offer is valuable? Um, when Carl made, you know, when uh, Beachbody On Demand came and they were changing like the challenge pack prices and I believe it started off at like $1.99 and then it kept going down. I'm like, Carl, what the freak are you doing? Like you're giving this stuff away for free. Like I think it's like we're giving this stuff away for free, right? Like. I believe that what we have to offer is way more valuable than what we sell it for. So I, without a shadow of a doubt, believe that, damn, like even $1.99, I think is super cheap for everything that people get. So when people give me that objection, um, we'll go over different ways, but I know my mindset is, man, this is like value, value. And I really don't get too many price objections now, um, you know, Instagram, because it's a lot of new people, um, but people who have been following me for a while, I really don't, because that's the um, belief that I pour out to them. So let's go into actually handling objections when we get them. Um, I would say, yeah, money is always the main objection, right? Um, or people 
don't like shakes or I don't do shakes. Um, I don't have the time is another one or I go to the gym is another thing. So let's kind of break some of those down. And I found these, um, I feel like this stuff is so old school from Tommy Migrant from like back in the day, he was um, like a founding coach. And he talked about this at the first summit that I went to. So I just ate this stuff up and I still use it to this day and it's absolute gold. So the first thing um, that I use to handle objections is called, I don't know, all I know is dot, dot, dot. And I get this from a lot of my coaches. It's like, how does, you know, um, Shakeology compare to this shake or that shake? I'm like, you know, I don't know. All I know is Shakeology has helped me with my IBS. And when I first started it, I like realized, wow, like I'm actually going to the bathroom again. Like, this is amazing. So fill in the blank with whatever your story is. So this is great for when you don't know the answer, right? Like you don't need to know all the answer. You're not freaking a, an encyclopedia of all the superfoods in Shakeology, right? Um, but you can say, I don't know. All I know is dot, dot, dot. So you can use that, you know, for the shake thing. You can use that for really any, you know, comparing um, like CrossFit to Beachbody. I don't know. All I know is that doing these workouts from home has been super simple for me, especially, you know, with having a kid and one on the way. I don't have freaking time to like drive to the gym and be around like other people, like no offense. Like I'm cool with the working out upstairs on my own, 45 minutes and I'm legit done. So I don't know, all I know is dot, 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 fill in the blank with your story. The other thing I love to use is feel felt found. So this one is really great um, for anything that you can relate to, especially, you know, too much money. If someone's like, nah, like it's too much for me, I say, I totally understand how you feel. I felt the same way. And I found once I started drinking Shakeology, I wasn't eating um, a whole pizza after um, Friday night football game because I was starving. I could actually eat my dinner on the sideline and, you know, nobody knew what it was, right? Um, it kept me full. I was energized and that really helped me take control of my appetite. So again, use your story. I know exactly how you feel. I felt the same way and I found give your results. If you're a brand new coach and you don't um, have stories yet, use your upline stories. Use um, like my mom um, in the beginning, she, you know, your um, family is usually either like they join you right away or they're super hesitant, right? They're super skeptical. And that was my mom. So when people um, are like skeptical about like Shakeology, I'll say like, hey, I know exactly how you feel. My mom felt the same way, but she found um, once she started drinking Shakeology, she wasn't crashing in the afternoon. She was a librarian and being around kids all day really wore her down and she would have to come home and legit like take a nap at four o'clock. And once she started Shakeology, she didn't have to do that anymore. So start collecting these stories so that you can help people feel validated. Like, yeah, I totally get how you feel. And then helping them overcome that by giving them a story versus getting like defensive and being like, oh, no way, it's not too much money. Like people don't wanna hear that, right? Like they wanna be understood, but then you can share with them a story so you make that connection with people. I personally love reminding people of the 30 day money back guarantee. I will save that for, you know, I won't say that right away, right? I won't be like, all right, here's your challenge pack options and give them that 30. I mean, because I feel like you need to be, what I say, on your mindset, right? You need to be confident in what we have. But if they give you objections, I think that 30 day money back guarantee always helps people just feel a little bit safer in knowing that if this does not work for them, obviously um, they can get their money back. Um, when I'm going through that conversation with them, you know, I've talked about their why and ask them lots of, you know, fitness and nutrition questions to really find what's going to work for them. Then that's when I'll do the talking is at the end and being very specific with what they get. So I don't normally share, I don't, 
a picture of like the challenge pack with the price, I, I, I get very specific with all the bullet points of what they get. And then I give them the price because if they see everything that they get for 160 bucket, bucks, it's, they're probably reading that and thinking, oh my God, that's like $500. And then they see 160. So being very specific and showing them all that they get, all that value, I think really helps them see um, exactly what they're getting and kind of disarms that sticker shock up front, even though I think 160 bucks is super duper cheap. Um, and then I love these questions for clarifying. And especially I remember like as a brand new coach, when somebody would tell me no, I would like show my computer or like turn my phone off and like run away and hide. And I wouldn't follow up or like clarify what they actually meant. So if someone's telling you no, or they don't have enough time or it's too much money, don't just say, okay, and walk away. You need to kind of dig a little bit deeper because it's usually just their hesitation that they have questions. And as a coach, we need to dig in a little bit and find out what that is. So these are some questions that I really love to ask. The first one is, why is now not a good time? So a lot of people will use that time thing. Um, and then sometimes people will say, you know, oh, I'm really busy right now. It's a crazy season of life. And I'll say something like, you know, is there a time when it's not going to be crazy for you? And most likely people are like, no, not really. Like we all think right this second is the busiest time of our life. And then we're going to think that tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow. And we're going to use that excuse forever. But if you kind of like call them out a little bit, um, if that's your, like, that's my personality is calling them out a little bit. And that's what I feel like we need to do as coaches, right? Like that's holding people accountable. Like if they're really serious about change and reaching their goals, like that's part of the accountability that they get as a coach. And I think people will respect that from you if you help them dig into, you know, it's really, it is now not a good time or have you been just using that as an excuse? But say that in a nice way, like, all right, in three months, is your life going to change that much drastically or not? One other or a few other ones. The next question is, what is holding you back? So if someone is just like going back and forth or ghosting you, I'll say like, hey, so-and-so, like, I know you saw my message. You know, tell me like, what's really holding you back? And then sometimes I'll say, is it the price? Or um, is it that you're not sure that, you know, home fitness will work for you? I'll kind of throw something at them to, so I can kind of uncover what that real objection is. Because sometimes it's not the price if they didn't say it. Sometimes it's something like totally out in left field. And unless you uncover it, then they're going to think that without you actually being able to explain what that objection is. Um, you know, sometimes... If it's the shake thing, I don't do shakes. Just dig in a little bit more, right? Like, have you ever tried Shakeology before? Or have you tried a different shake? Um, you know, nine times out of 10, I just need to grab a sip of water. Nine times out of 10, they tried Shakeology like eight years ago and they just like shook it with water. And I'm like, yeah, that is kind of gross. <laughs> I agree, but I have some awesome recipes. Um, and you know what, sending them a free sample with some recipes, you know, the packet, um, sometimes if that's how you need to step people into this, if they've tried something before and they didn't like it, that's a great way um, to kind of overcome that. If it's something about um, the coaching opportunity, you know, you can say, have you ever been a network company in a network marketing company before or anybody, sorry, I got like the heartburn stuff going on. Um, Anybody that you know, um, were they in network in a network uh, network marketing company before? Um, you know, what's that bad taste in your mouth about? Like, because I'll be honest, network marketing gets a badass rap, um, and I agree with people because you see the stuff out there on Instagram, right? You get those 
DMs that you're like, oh, like, so no, right? Um, so ask them more, like, what about um, coaching turns them off? Did you have a bad experience before? Maybe they joined Beachbody with a different coach and they um, just had a bad experience or maybe they did Shakely or, I don't know, Arbon and had a bad experience with them. And then, you know, if they're like, yeah, like I didn't like it, then you can kind of um, answer their hesitations with that. And I really love these last two questions as like, the last resort um if money wasn't an issue would you be in I think that one is gold if money wasn't an issue would you be in and most people will say yes I would be in I'd be like awesome if you have three friends that would want to join you you can get your package completely paid for right um or if they say like you know if money was an issue would you would you be in um and they say yeah of course I'd be like awesome. Like, what do you do for work? Are you looking for a second stream of income? I know like my success partner, that's how she got her elite coach is she was interested in a challenge pack and she asked her what she did for work. And she said this, you know, I, I forget what she did for work, but that she was unhappy. And then boom, she was able to um, ask the coach opportunity and it worked out. So you never know what people really need until you ask. Um, and then this one I really like too is what will it cost you not to make a change? That really gets people thinking, right? What would it cost you not to make a change? And that's right, a little uncomfortable to ask people, but again, that's what we do as coaches to hold people accountable is to make them, this isn't supposed to be a comfortable process, right? Like doing 645. I mean, I love the program. Um, even though there's lots of breaks, it's still uncomfortable, right? Um, you have to embrace that um, with them. And you have to be willing to ask those hard questions, even though you might not want to, because that's what's going to uncover what's really going on with people. Um, and I really love uh, like posting about those objections that you're getting. So if you keep getting the same objections over and over, look at what you're posting about. Look how you're talking. Um, do you need to just be flat out and explain it to people, right? Um, if that many people are having the same objection, then maybe there's something that you're doing that's causing the same thing to repeat. Um, and that way you can talk to them directly, right? but not directly, but like, you know, like in your stories or in your feed, and then other people will see that as well. Um, and then always just support people regardless, because a no is not a forever no. I mean, even after my coach, it took her 10 messages just to get a response. And even after that, I'm like, you're a stranger. You're trying to get me in this network marketing scheme. Even when she got me on the phone, to sign up with my challenge pack. I'm, I think back then it was $220, $220, a Shailene um, Turbo Fire. And I was like, wait, it's $220. And you said I got 25% off. So that means it's yada, yada, yada. And she's like, no, no, no. Like I was like, I was nitpicking, right? But she continued um, on with that conversation and, and kept asking the right questions for me to actually get me signed up, thankfully. Um, so just support them throughout the entire process because you never know where that person, um, that person can be the next elite coach on your team. But if you give up on them, then they won't be, right? Um, and then always ask them if it's okay to follow up with them for your next group. So if you ask them all those things, if you said, I, you know, I know exactly how you feel, I felt and found the same way, yada, yada. Like always keep those doors open because you just never know. It might not be the right timing for them. You know, some things really do happen. It's not the right timing for them, but you still have to leave those doors open and be there for them when they are ready. So that's what I got for you guys tonight. Um, I can definitely hang on for a little. Um, if you guys have any questions or objections you need um, some help with. So 
how many times do you feel like you follow up with people? Because I think that that's like, how many times do you get an objection? I don't count. And it, you don't count? Yeah, okay. I, I don't count. Um, I'm not, I'm the worst tracker you will probably ever meet. Um, obviously, if I scroll up, I can see how many times I've talked to yeah, them. Yeah, yeah. But I don't, I, I really don't. Um, so you just like randomly follow up. You don't track it at all. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And there's no, um, limit. I mean, and I've never had somebody say, leave me alone. Right. Yeah. I've never had that. Right. Makes sense. What other That'd questions? Be the only time I'd leave someone alone. <laughs> They're like, leave me alone. Okay. What other questions do people have? Nothing. Sorry, looking at my notes. Um, I guess, um, do people really like, do you like process that first question when you say like, why is now not a good time? Does that really get you into like a good dialogue with people sometimes? Cause I like that. I'm just like, Ooh, is that? How do people oh, absolutely. <laughs> because it, it shows that you actually care about them and aren't there just for a quick sale. It's getting, it's really getting to know people. Um, and I think those are questions that people are like, oh, like taken back from because all the other network marketers would just end that conversation. Whereas you're taking the time to really like uncover what's going on with them. So yeah, I always, um, all those things, I I get really great response back. Mm. Okay, good to know. Thanks. Yeah. Interesting. What else do people have? You guys can unmute yourself or you can ask questions in the chat if it's easier. So for those that hopped on late, one thing I said in the beginning is we're kicking off this fear is my home girl group next week um, reading. And I feel like the number one fear I get from people is I'm afraid of being rejected. And so the goal of this call was to say like, you don't have to be afraid of being rejected because these are some ways you can combat it. And then we're going to work on overcoming the fears in the actual um in the actual reading group. And hopefully you can invite some customers and potential customers to join. That's gonna be our free group for August. And we're really just gonna, cause there's people are afraid of more things than I'm sure you're afraid of more things than just asking people about joining the business, right? So we're just gonna work on overcoming fears and then we'll have a separate coach thread to talk about like how this applies to the business but the group will be more general on being a badass, so. And I think even like leading with your fears and being upfront that just shows your vulnerability. Um, I love Brene Brown. Brene Brown, I think her stuff is awesome. Mm -hmm. um, but leading with your own fear, even like if you're reaching out to somebody about the coach opportunity, you can be like, hey, Sally, um, I'm super scared to ask you this question because I don't want you to think I'm bugging you, but I think you would make an amazing coach on my team because you share such great stuff on social media and you'd be so much fun, blah, blah, you know what I mean? So like lead with your fear and people will be like, wow. Like, and sometimes that makes you human, right? And that's what connects people to people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think so too. People think you're just like, I was just having this conversation at work actually, because I'm working on this like really complicated project and it's going to be like, amazing when it's done, but I was kind of in, I want to say an argument. I was in discussion with a woman about it. She was like, I was like, we need to talk about like how difficult this was, like this innovation pod. I was like, we need to talk about how difficult this was to like get here. Cause people are just going to see this amazing finished product and think it was like flowers and rainbows. And she was yeah. like, no, we need to keep it positive. And I was like, yeah, okay. I can keep it positive. But like, it was hard to get here. And we need to talk about like why it was hard, what we did to overcome it, what we learned, right? So that people don't think that like, we just pulled this out and everything was great because in the process, like 
I offended someone and actually another girl in a different innovation pod got like escalated on and like, it's just been crazy. So um, I think it's important to show that vulnerability too, because that makes people like think, okay, that person's human. and Maybe I can do it too. And that's your story, right? Yeah. Yeah, totally. Anything else? All right. Well, hopefully we'll see you guys in the um, group on Monday. If you didn't get your book, grab it. Amazon delivers it in like three seconds. So um, thank you, Rosemary, very, very much for joining us. I hope you feel better. I know you have a... Um, <laughs> and I hope the doctor sees you at some point. That'd be I know nice. mid August. I'm like, great. I'll mm -hmm. make all right. All right. Well, happy Wednesday and we'll talk to y'all later. Thanks. Bye.